our field of vision. But here we go. Here's page eight. Um, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack, or I think they call it scrapbook pad. That's going to be our base. And then I'm going to put um, an element on top of it. I want to make sure I've got this correct. So the it's already been ink trimmed down, and I use mahogany ink, powder puff, my favorite. Um, I really like to knock off the white core, and I found the powder puff to be perfect for me because um, it's very soft sponge instead of a hard um, saturated ink surface, which I think is better for stamping. But in scrapbooking, where you're just doing the edges, it works perfectly, so I don't need an applicator. And then um, I also notice that it doesn't get on me as much. So we do sell it in the shop. They call it chalking ink, and it's made by Quick Quotes. And you can use it for stamping. I've never done that. I always use it just for scrapbooking. Just so you know, and it comes in a whole bunch of colors, but I always choose the darker colors because I'm just knocking off the white core. I don't like to distress into the patterns too much, mainly because um, the collections we work with already look somewhat distressed, so you don't really need to go into the pattern much. So I think it depends on what you're working with. And then if you're going to distress further in, I would recommend going a little bit lighter than mahogany. Okay, so there's our base page. No magnets or anything yet. Then we're going to add this uh, element, um, which is kind of like a card with a pocket. But instead of building the pocket independently, it's just um, an 11 by 6 inch. And you're going to score at 4, 4 and 1 eighth just so you have a little bit more room, and eight and a half. So four, four and one eight, eight and a half. And then I'm gonna run a bead of glue here to create a pocket. So we'll put something interesting in the pocket. We're using magnets to keep everything closed. And this is what we're going to use here. And I just think the beige and the pinks go together really well. I haven't used this pattern yet, so that's the other reason I wanted to make sure it got incorporated. I like to make sure I use every pattern in the collection pack. Okay. Nice, so now on the inside, that's a strong magnet. On the inside, I'm gonna use this and a second one down here um, for both the, the pocket and uh, the backing. So I'm gonna take this one and split it in half. This one's just gonna cover the top. So I'm just doing a quick dry fit and it looks like it needs to be straightened out a little bit. So let me find my pencil. Yeah, it does look like it's cut. As you can see now, I've got it flush over here. It's cut at quite an angle. So I think if I trim off this, it'll be straight. Let's try that. Let's see how I did. I think I did okay, but I do think I need to trim a little off the bottom. It's too close to the hinge. Oh, I hope that's enough. I got tired eyes, it's hard to see. Tired dry eyes. Uh, it's too much on this side and not enough on that side. So I'll take a little more off here and that should straighten everything off. out. Okay. I'm ink everything. I can pick it up.
I mentioned in uh, some of the previous videos that I'm using just regular scotch tape on top of the magnets to soften the edge. Um, I think it's thinner than the double-sided tape. Um, and I'll let you know how that goes. So my only concern is whether or not the art glitter glue is going to stay adhered to the magnet, which you know if you use double-sided tape, that's going to happen. You don't have to worry about the, the glue breaking free. Um, wow, I'm just really not happy with that. That turned out really crooked. Sorry about bumping the camera. So I'm going to start over. And let's start on the bottom. And I think it's this that's crooked. So what I'm going to do is cut this one to make sure it's square. And then I've got yet one more so we can recover. Oops, I need the pencil, not the glue. So anyways, like I was saying about the um, scotch tape, I'll keep you posted. I don't think it's going to break free, but I'll let you know. I'm in test mode. Okay, now I'm going to try this new one. We're going to start over. Get all that out of my field of vision. That's gonna work as is. Something was crooked about the other one, but I'll use it to do the pocket back. So again, this is PJ. There's a little more of a gap between the two because I put that 1 8 inch gusset. I'm using uh, heavier cardstock than usual and it's necessary. Let's see, will this work? Actually, this will work. This is what, what I trimmed off earlier. So rather than cut down the four by six, I'm gonna use what I already have. Okay, now I made two inserts for this. So that's the closed position. I'm gonna glue three sides and then we're gonna use these as inserts. I have one is four by four by six and a quarter. The second one is four by five and a quarter. So the four by five will fit inside and the four by six is gonna fit on the outside. Again, we're only gonna glue the outside edges so that this becomes a pocket in and of itself. Thank you. 
So we're going to come in like three quarters of an inch on either side, roughly. And we're going to keep it low. And the reason we're keeping it low is because we have this insert, which is going to take up some of our visual space up here. Okay. Going to use this in here as well. Oops, not dry yet. Hold that in place for a minute while it dries. And then we can use these two as inserts. For the outside, and then of course we have an insert on the inside. I don't have any clamps that reach that far in, so that is page eight. So the next thing we're going to work on is page nine. I'll be right back. <laughs> 